Up until now, we've taken a look at both direct and inverse variation functions. We've written the equation for them. Over the next few days, now we're going to take a look at the graphs these direct and inverse variation equations produce. Today we're going to start off with the direct variation equation y equals k times x. So you can see we have y equals k times x graphed here in our uh, sketch. And as we change the value of k to make it larger, you should see the steepness of that line increasing. Likewise, as we get closer to zero, but in between one and zero, we should see that steepness of that line getting less and closer to the x-axis. Now, as we go negative, that line is going to slope down and to the right. And as we increase that value of negative number, it should be more steep uh, as that k value gets um, more and more negative. So this is our equation. And uh, from this, you should notice a few different things. This graph is always going to pass through the origin. And the slope of this graph, or the rate of change of this graph, is always going to be equal to the value of k, the constant of variation. You'll notice now, when we have k set equal to 1, the rise over the run is also 1. As we set that to k is equal to 2, you can see now our rise over our run is equal to 2 over 1, making that slope, or that rate of change, equal to the constant of variation, which is 2 in this case. In example one, we're asked to find the slope of a line which contains or passes through the points 10, 7, and 8, 1. Now, a few years ago, you learned the equation for calculating the slope of a line through two points. You learned it something like this, y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. Now, remember this y sub 2 and y sub 1, or x sub 2 and x sub 1, just refers to their location. Uh, so we can call this x sub 1 and y sub 1, and this one x sub 2 and y sub 2. But it doesn't really matter which one is the first coordinate and which one is the second, as long as you keep them together. So let's calculate this slope both ways. We'll start off by saying 7 minus 1 divided by 10 minus 8. 7 minus 1 is 6 over 10 minus 8 is 2. The slope of that line is 3. Now, what happens if we reverse that around and go the other way? We'll have 1 minus 7 over 8 minus 10. And again, what you'll see is you have negative 6 over negative 2. A negative divided by a negative results in a positive, so that gives us the same slope as what we had before. So the slope of this line that passes through these two points should be equal to 3. All right, in our next example, we're asked to complete a table of values for the graph of the variation equation y equals 1.5x. So a couple of different ways you can do this. You can use your graphing calculator, or you can use Desmos. Let's go out to Desmos and take a look at that graph. All right, we're going to let our value for y equal 1.5. And here's our table of values. We see that 0, 0 passes to the origin, 1, 1 1.5, 2, 3. If I enter in more values here, I can see that I'll continue to get their y values. So let's go back to our notes now and fill in our table of values. 0, 0, 2, 3, 4, 6, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, and negative 6. When we plot those points, we'll be sure to pass through the origin and go over 2 and up to 3, over 4 and up to 6. And again, what you should see is that there's that constant slope, our constant rate of chains, and uh, there's the graph of our equation y equals 1.5x. Now, again, our constant variation here is 1.5, and that is also the slope of our line. All right, and our final example for today, we're asked to determine which equation fits the lines over here on the right-hand side. So our first equation says y equals 5x. In other words, the slope of our line, or the constant of variation, is 5. Well, that's a positive number, so I'm looking for a line that slopes up and to the right, and it's going to be fairly steep. So you'll notice all of these pass through the origin. The one that's steepest and slopes up to the right 
is the graph uh, 4. The next one says negative 5x, so now we want something that slopes down and to the right, and again, the same steepness as the graph before. So that's this one here, which looks like it's 3. All right, and we want 1 fifth x. Now this is a positive value, so it's sloping up and to the right, but it's close to 0. So it will be less steep or closer to the x-axis. So here we have one that's gradually climbing, and it looks like that's the graph of line 2. And then finally, the last one left we have is the graph of 1.